So the monitoring is available, and we can uh, see underground and quantify the benefits. The work that we've done in the last few years, I should say, on this, with this monitoring tool as it's configured right now, we can quantify the full range of environmental services that come from soil, every single one, whether it's groundwater recharge, water purification, uh, flooding reduction, carbon sequestration, other gas mitigation like nitrous oxide, methane. This tool actually can give us all that very accurately and across any size landscape, which is exciting. And it can communicate it to people because now, <laughs> who's gotten a soil test and it's tabular, it's a big list of numbers. And it's like, great. <laughs> it doesn't tell me anything. And that investment banker in Manhattan, even less. The other piece we've been working on is this new soil matrix. And I promised I'd get around to new soil matrix, I think. Matrix is interesting. I think most people think of Canoe Reeves in a movie about the future, and you took the red pill, and there's, they can duck bullets. Uh, matrix is Latin for pregnant livestock. I don't know if anyone was aware of that, but it, that kind of surprised me. And it also means a source, like a womb is a source. Um, so we call it the new soil matrix because we started finding all these information technologies that enabled us to think in whole watersheds. And we began finding networking and video capabilities that we found gave us the ability to understand soils better, to communicate with other producers who had innovations. And there were tools to quantify and evaluate the environmental services that came from soils. There was artificial intelligence capabilities to do scenario planning uh, of future resource bases. And for urban planners, corporate planners, non-governmental organizations, et cetera, to be able to understand that changed soil properties very may well be the key to the future and prosperity of their city. And finally, we found quite a few tools for performance-based environmental services payment systems to be organized and executed. So we've been working for some years on pulling all this together. I apologize for being so slow. It's taken a long time. And when I get it together, I really can't wait for all of you to use it. It's to, don't wait for me. I'll keep working. As soon as I can, we'll get it to you. Uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, I just want to plant this seed that cities need what we can produce. In effect, I'm looking at, I think, in, in three years, I want to come back here, and you all are going to be like the future OPEX of your region. <laughs> you do. Water is the new oil, and you're the new Saudi Arabia, and you're the Qatar, and <laughs> you're the UAE. So building momentum. I think that we need to prove our case with monitoring and demonstrate that we can solve cities' problems cost-effectively, soon, lastingly. Any monitoring that we have, we should get it out, share it, and share it with not just ourselves, but with the people in the environmental organizations and in the cities. Stuff like Greg Simon's work is going to be breaking through a lot of understanding, I think. We need to, use, make, we need to make use of info technology to communicate the complexity of nature working. It's a little more than we can grasp. And this last bit, it, I take pretty seriously. Probably live like it's the last day of our life and ranch like the future depends on it, because it does. It does come down to us. A couple immediate steps that I think are available and right outside that door that can help us do this. The first is the soil carbon challenge. And it's an XPRIZE style challenge to see how fast we land managers can accrue carbon in soils. It's kind of been relegated to the scientists and the experts to do this for us or tell us how much can be done or the models show this. But my friend Peter Donovan, who is one, the primary organizer on this, he says, if you want to find out how fast someone can run a mile, you don't model the racetrack and look at human physio. You run a race. And uh, that's the point. And there's a standardized monitoring methodology. It's not super fancy, but it's accurate, it's reliable, and for the purposes that we're after here, it's just right. So please, if you have an interest in putting your management to the test, go outside and sign up. And uh, it could be a big piece of building momentum for our case that we can meet the needs of cities and the rest of society for environmental security through soil. And further, if you have any monitoring data, 
there's now a map of soil carbon changes at soilcarboncoalition.org. And it's a growing map, and it has a lot of blank spaces on different continents, but it keeps growing. And what it gives us is a, the ability to look around the world and see where people are doing what and what they're achieving. If you have soil carbon results on your farm, you can post them on this map. And when I find out about somebody next door to me or in Nebraska that I didn't know was really working hard, it encourages me, it inspires me, and the story gets bigger and bigger and richer and richer. Thanks for your time. <laughs>